Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, we're here live. Uh, and tonight we have a, a special guest here, uh, Kevin Battistoni uh, with Hunter Industries. Um, and he's going to be here to share some value when it comes to the irrigation side of the business. Um, and along with uh, Kevin, we have the other co-founder of Cycle CPA, Carla, um, and then myself, Joe. Um, and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us tonight, Kevin. My yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Thank, uh, no, I, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Um, inefficient irrigation is running rampant. So anything we can do to try to improve that, I'll be there. <laughs> I love yeah. that. And yeah, just to start things off, can you um, kind of give the audience like a quick intro on, you know, how you got started within the green industry? Sure, sure. Yeah, that that's uh, that's an easy one. Um, I got my start in the irrigation industry when I was about five years old. Um, my grandfather owned, uh, and he and his brother, my uncle owned an irrigation company together, but, um, uh, my family's origin in irrigation began in 1928 in the Chicagoland area with a company called Mueller Mist Irrigation, which is still in business to this day. Um, and I still call on them, they're a customer, which is pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I, uh, basically when mom was, uh, working at the beauty shop, uh, doing hair, um, not long didn't take long for me, but, um, <laughs> you know, that was babysitting. I rode around with my grandfather in the service truck and learned about service and irrigation systems. You know, when I was five years old, he put me on a milk crate in front of a dial controller with a Motorola radio. And I, I he waited, I waited for him to say next. And I turned the dial to go to the next zone. Um, so Working in family business is not an easy thing as, uh, and, and I love it and I admire because the vast majority of my customers are generational and they're small family owned and operated. Um, and there's trials and tribulations there. And when it came around to, I'm one of three boys, we're all three years apart. My older brother is a licensed plumber and owns an irrigation company. And I was his number one guy in 1996. He was, he was, I was 19 years old. He was paying me $16 an hour, which was extremely good money. Yeah. And, uh, we would get in fist fights on a daily basis in people's front yards about how the system was going to go in. So, uh, <laughs> recognizing that dynamic was not going to stand the test of time, or at least my hand wasn't cause he's got really big fists. Um, I made the transition into distribution. Um, so it, while I was attending community college, um, got into distribution, literally took a 50% pay cut, went to work for a supply house, pushing the broom in the warehouse for $8 an hour. Um, because I had some background in the industry, things kind of escalated fast. Cause I, like most, uh, latter teens, I didn't know what I wanted to do directionally. Um, but I had the skill set and I had a really good mentor and he said, Kev, I think you can make a go of this. And, um, so throughout a decade in distribution, um, you know, like I said, started pushing the broom, but worked inside sales, um, did some irrigation design work, eventually became a branch manager um, when I was 21. And then the, the trajectory for me to get into um, what we would call a field sales role, where you're out in the field interacting with clients, was in landscape lighting and floating fountains and aerators and drainage products. We'd always sold them, but we weren't really good subject matter experts. So when the client circled back in need of some service for that stuff, um, we didn't have the skill set, and the whole sales cycle kind of fell apart and didn't feel good. So um, I began just doing outside sales for, for those particular lines of business, um, which were a lot of fun. I mean, landscape lighting has a wow factor to it display aeration and floating fountains has a wow factor. Irrigation is not sexy. You know what I mean? If the grass <laughs> is green, you did your job. Um, but after 11 years in distribution, um, you know, Hunter Industries is a company that um, I had installed their products. I had sold their products and I had a good friend that worked for them for many years. So I knew how they treated their distributor partners, their contractors as well as um, their employees and the opportunity arose in August of 07. Uh, and I came on board with Hunter and have been with them for the last 15 years. Um, I would say my titles this remain the same for those 15 years. But uh, as I tell our customers, you know, coming out of this pre COVID, the game has changed, the partnership hasn't. So what a day looks like for someone like myself has changed drastically. 
you know, over uh, the last 15 years, but that's a little bit of my background. Um, and I know I don't want to go too long on you. I know you, you've got some questions and stuff, but um, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Um, you know, and, you know, going off of, I know you had mentioned, you know, your role has, has changed a lot over the years. Um, you know, when it comes to some of the digital, you know, aspects that are now coming up and the way companies are utilizing technology in the, in the, in the irrigation space, you know, what have, what have you seen there? Um, well, look, like most irrigation contractors are no different than any other human being. We're not quick to change, right? And uh, technological adoption in the green industry, and this is, I'm part of this, so I'm, I'm going to, you know, some may see, oh, you're speaking down on green industry professionals. No, 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 I, I'm part of this, this same dichotomy. It is, um, we are somewhat primitive, um, myself included, when Hunter Industries acquired an organization uh, by the name of HydroWise in 2016, which is a uh, Wi-Fi software uh, hardware control for irrigation. Um, I was resistant. I mean, I can remember the, 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 the day, you know, calling my boss up saying, hey, you know, a one hour Zoom meeting with a guy in Australia that's bending the English binocular in a way I don't understand. Um, and now I'm a subject matter expert with this. I'm like, that's a bunch of crap, right? And my boss called me out cold. He said, Kevin, have you opened the app? Have you even played with the controller? And I had to step in the confessional and say no, right? And um, the, right then and there, he said, open it up. And when I kicked the tires on the software and I saw what the potential of what it did for not only the end user, but in making the life easier of the, of the green industry professional and their ability to give their customers a higher level of service, I became an evangelist for, for the product. And now, I mean, even there are products that even we per se don't manufacture um, that I spend a lot of time investigating that space because I just, I feel like the more that your, your smart filter should be any piece of tech, if you're looking at it and you're vetting it going, should, is this something that makes sense for our organization? If it allows you to make smarter decisions faster for you or your client, then, then to turn a blind eye to it is, is really doing yourself and your customers a disservice. So my mission since probably 2016 has been hyper-focused on that aspect. And um, the shortcomings are it's different, right? We move a shovel. We know ir ir green industry professionals, whether it's landscape or irrigation, we know our art. But when some new technology gets introduced in, in, into the art of what we do, um, you know, we're going to shy away from it and let, unless it can be easily explained. And what happens with smart controllers and connected devices is that the service, the contractor is fearful going into it and they have somewhat of a, a defeated posture when they interact with their client because they think the client knows more than they do. And in most cases, they may, right? So we're just... We, we don't exude the right behavior. And so um, I have kind of worked with all the domestic sales within Hunter Industries because there's 90 Kevins running around North America and we just get thrust into the bad calls, right? Contractors don't call us up when things are working great and give us that Y5, right? They, uh, they call us when there's problems and we're boots in the street. You know, we, we all, we pride ourselves on hiring people with industry experience. So we're thrust into these situations and we figure out local area networking. And so after multiple years of that, we just developed a good online training curriculum to break things down in a very simplistic, entertaining, engaging fashion to just better prepare green industry professionals for this huge, huge opportunity. I mean, yeah. I study stats. I mean, COVID was a hyper accelerant for technological adaption across every demographic. My parents didn't have Wi-Fi at their homes and my dad had an iPhone six until the pandemic. When I installed the Wi-Fi controller form, I sent him YouTube videos on training. He said, eh, Kev, pump the brakes. Let me see if I can do this on my own. Within two weeks, a guy who could barely navigate an iPhone six pre-COVID was, was, was just literally in the deep end of the pool and he was swimming. And it, it just kind of blew my mind. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Joe and I have HydroWise. So I, you know, being a, a customer of it, I can definitely attest to how easy it is to use from a client perspective. And when, you know, our irrigation tech set us up on that, 
it took him like 10, 15 minutes to set it up on my phone. And no, I did not know more than him. He had to walk me through every single item. So, you know, for those uh, irrigation techs out there that may be reluctant, um, just, you know, it, that's not the case at all, I feel like. Yeah. And and uh, Kevin, can you dive more into some some of the details and, you know, what, what kind of data, you know, these you sort of devices can, can bring? Yeah, no, well, now in, in, well, there's two aspects to this, right? Um, the one is smart controller. So I don't want the preconceived, I don't want to mislead people to think, hey, all you need is a smart controller and you are good to go. You should first exhaust all of your resources into improving what's in the field first in terms of making sure that your heads are level with grade, you're using check valves, pressure regulation, the head spacing is appropriate. Because if, if that isn't, if you don't have an efficient irrigation system, it doesn't matter how much technology you pour on to the brain being that heart, that, that interface or the enterprise software remotely, right? It's still an inefficient irrigation system thinking it's making intelligent decisions. So um, that's where you want to put your resources first. And we can get into those things, but since we're on the smart controller track, um, assuming we've made those necessary site improvements, the, the areas that I would uh, say are, you have two things with an irrigation system. You have electricity and you have hydraulics, okay? There's three things I'm going to speak on, two of, two of which you have water flow, the hydraulics, you have electricity driving, right? The controller is like your brain sending electrical signal to your heart, which is the valves in the field telling it to beat valves coming on and off operating a group of sprinkler heads so outside of those two um then you then you have um weather most irrigation controllers run for the same duration of time all season and the green industry professional that services that system will typically err on the side of caution and lay down cycles that might be in excess of what's needed but when we have the times like now where things are dry and things are hot, they're still going to be okay, right? So in the shoulders, the spring and the fall, we're just wasting a boatload of water, right? And so the smart controller technology, specifically, you know, I can talk intimately about all my competitors as well. I know their products. Everybody makes something good or they wouldn't be in business. And I, and <laughs> I, make, it, I make it a point to know, you know, my competition. But in general, um, with specifically with HydroWise, what happens is we're using what we call hyperlocal weather, right? So for example, on the surface area of the earth today, there are 400,000 weather stations on weather underground. It's the largest weather network in the world. It's owned by IBM and Watson, IBM supercomputer, you may have seen on Jeopardy before, is driving that system. They're also taking 40,000 data points a day from commercial airline flights. Okay. And right now, if you have a smartphone and it has weather.com, weather channel, or weather underground on it, your phone is reading barometric pressure that's going back into an algorithm, which when you put in, when your contractor set up your HydroWise controller, they implemented your address and they clicked virtual weather station. And what happened is it gridded out a 1600 square foot grid based on your GPS coordinates to use all that information I just shared with you in Watson's algorithm to determine temperature, humidity, wind speed, and probability of rain as a future cast. Past tense data that gets gathered is accumulation of rain, actuals, right? And we have a series of triggers, which the contractor and or homeowner can control to determine when we want to reel it in. We don't need as much water, Right. If it's if, if we're getting cooler temps or we've had some rain in the forecast or it's really windy and it needs irrigation. But if we lay it down now, there's excess of wind and it's not going to go where we want. So it's going to be wasted. So just to make a good, intelligent decisions right before the controller goes to cycle, it just checks itself like a little litmus test against all these triggers to say good time, not a good time, full full cycle, little less. So that's one aspect. And that that's been proven. And we have the data to show that's been proven to save on average as high as 30% annually based on wow. standard practices. And if you're a real irrigation nerd, you're getting real mad right now. You're going, Kevin, that's, you can't just say 30%. Again, this is compiled amongst all the data that we have in HydroWise with millions of irrigation controllers out there today. So 
yes, is it site specific and do things change area to area? Right now where it's hot and dry, you might not be saving any water because again, it's making the right decisions to keep your plant material green with the ex appropriate amount, not an excess. So when it gets hot and dry, yeah, you're not gonna see a savings necessarily, but on average you do. When it comes to the electrical integrity of your system, specifically, um, you know, things like you have solenoid valves in the field and you have wire connecting them back to the controller. And if they're interrupted, like a wire is cut or there's a direct short in the field, typically the way the contractor hears about that is after it's caused damage landscape, right? And you have an upset client calling your office and they're mad and they, and they want that to be fixed now. Just by simply hanging the hardware on the wall with the HydroWise controller, it's got its arms completely around the electrical integrity of the system so that every one of those solenoids uses and consumes a certain amount of energy. And the software keeps a 30-day rolling average of that energy consumption. So if it begins to spike or it begins to go down a precursor to an electrical issue or there's a cut wire, immediately the client and the contractor see, receive real-time notification so that now the contractor can proactively address these issues before it's damaged landscape, right? So wow. um, it's as if you're hiring your irrigation professional to sit in your garage all <laughs> summer long, right? But without, yeah. with, but without having the intrusiveness of that, right? The, and being able to um, respond to those abnormalities um, if you install what we call a flow meter, which is an a la carte feature. Now we can also monitor the electrical integrity of that system as well, right? Just on its own, it learns what normal water usage is for every zone. You set, hey, how much more than normal is okay? 20%, 30%, whatever that is. So let's say you have a broken sprinkler head at your house, Carla and, and Joe. And so it eclipses that threshold. It'll take that said zone put it in the penalty box, not let it run, send that tandem notification, but then continue on running normal for the rest of the zones. And the contractor can literally choose how long that zone stays in the penalty box. So they have some time to take action and schedule that service call. All this sort of stuff without the hydraulic being able to monitor, that's the cusp, that's you, Joe and Carla, calling your contractor three weeks from now mad because you just noticed your backyard starting to flood and your water bills triple what it normally is, right? And you're upset and rightfully wow. so because there's, and, and I would be as well because there's technology like this available to prevent it. And when you look at the remote aspect of providing that service, um, yeah. it's something that becomes a new revenue stream for a contractor because they are monitoring this right and and interacting with you but also just the convenience hey our kids having a graduation party saturday you know send your customer a text or email we need to not water from friday to monday roger that in 10 seconds Mom. we can set up a future suspension it could be six months from now you know and, it, and so we can make changes on the fly that used to require your co contractor coming to your home being there for five minutes, billing you 150 bucks, you're ticked, right? Because you're like, this is crazy. He was here for five minutes. That's uh, but yeah. from his perspective, he's licensed, they're licensed, they're insured, they're bonded. They probably have $40,000 in material on their truck. And that truck would have been billing and invoicing elsewhere if they didn't come to your house. So it's it, it, contractors or per, green industry professionals that don't see the value and having remote access to irrigation controllers and features and benefits that I mentioned, I don't have time for anymore. You know, wow. it is, it, and because we just can't get to everyone to train them up, which is, you know, platforms like this. Um, it was funny, and I'll open up for a question in a moment, but in December at the Irrigation Association um, show, I did a presentation on um, not my product, but just explaining how connected devices work and giving contractors the tools and free applications to be able to test before they hang the hardware to know it'll actually work for the client. And in the classroom, um, there were only 25 people, you know, it, it held 150, but there, it, you know, there was room for it, but only 25. And we had broadcasted Facebook live, like we're doing now. 
and we had 2,500 people online watching it. You know, so it's just, um, you have to, in this day and age, you must be easy to do business with. And if you are not leveraging technology, you are not easy to do business with, you know, and that, and that is really, um, this lends itself today. This is just the spark in the area of focus because we're starting to see non-green industry professionals begin to fish in our pond, you know, and, and I want to prevent that. My, my, my primary mission other than conserving water is to see green industry professionals profitable, period. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a small little ecosystem. You have manufacturer, distributor, contractor. And, and I want to hold up our end of that triangle relationship. And, you know, you said something very interesting before about having that convenience factor now built in for the client and the contractor um, and being able to get uh, notified remotely in regard to these irrigation repairs or like you said upcoming events that they may have um, on the client side um, it seems to me that uh, green industry professionals can package this into a monthly recurring you know service just out of convenience have you Absolutely. seen that being done yes um, you know I'll, and I'll give you the you know I speak frankly to everybody, so I don't, I don't mind. And I, you know, if sometimes I ruffle some feathers, but I, I mean, I, I, it's when you, when you tell the truth, you don't really have to keep tabs on what you say. You know, it's, it's, it's so um, yes and no, there are clients out there that have fully embraced it and have, have, have monetized that line of business for a recurring revenue stream. Um, now, typically, and we can, you know, I'm in a seasonal market, you're in a seasonal market. So, you know, just from a consumer stance, I hate to see reoccurring monthly bills, right? Especially if I'm used to you charging me for my startup and for my winterization, right? And if I call you out for something broken in between. So what many do is either divide whatever that, that cost is for monitoring amongst those two calls, right? Hey, there's an extra, and I've seen numbers all over the board. I don't even want to speak. I don't, I don't want to overstep, but um that said, whatever that number they want to charge for monitoring, divide it, put half of it on the spring startup, half of it on the service. But they, you need the, the, the big misstep is failing to tell your client. And I don't know, and you could be a perfect example and don't, don't tell me who takes care of your system <laughs> that off the, off the table. But when they installed your hydrowise controller, did they clearly explain to you everything that the controller and they are going to do for you remotely? Uh, no, I didn't okay. even know, you know, that this remote transactions could take place. Um, but I feel that in this economy, you know, everything being subscription based with the new generation here is such a huge opportunity to, to take that and spread it amongst the, you know, season as a monthly recurring charge. So here's what I would, here's what I would challenge you to do um, sometime after our call, reach out to your irrigation contractor because there's a feature in the application that's only available to contractors. And so you as a homeowner, the only way you can receive this messaging I'm going to explain to you is if you're A, attached your controller, your HydroWise accounts attached to your contractor and B, if your contractor initiates it, which I can initiate one right now in about 30 seconds. And what that is, is I can send you water savings reports on a weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual basis. Um, and it could come through and via push notification through the app or email. And it reads like a children's book. It's, a, it's big pictures, bold print, and it says, hey, here is last month's water savings brought to you courtesy of Kevin's Irrigation and HydroWise. Shows you you were scheduled to run 12,000 minutes, but due to the predictive watering triggers, we only watered a thousand minutes. So you netted this percentage of savings. And then it has a pie chart showing specifically what the reason for that percentage of savings, you know, turned off 10% of the time due to high probability of rain, turned off 5% of the time due to low temp. So this, we, this is all packaged and, and part of what just comes with the software, which contractors do pay for. Right. And so your contractor is paying for that hydrolyzed software. We don't charge the end user, but very few are using it to its fullest capacity where, you know, I always put myself in the eyes of the end user. 
if you can clearly explain to me the ROI and for in you know for what you're asking me to invest in or pay or buy into the subscription, if there's a substantial savings, I'm listening. You know, and so yeah. that's something we've had for the last two years. I can't say it enough. And when I do, it's like the light bulb just went off and they're like, oh my God, I, I need to be doing it. Like, yes, because this is the catalyst or the ammunition um, that you need to explain to your client. So by not clearly defining, getting back to when yours went in, because your, your contractor failed to define for you all of the things that they and the software were going to do, you didn't have a very high perceived value of it other than it's a cool toy that I can remotely use from my phone and it feels good, right? And with cell phone obsession and poor heck tech hygiene running rapid, um, that's usually the primary driver for the upgrade. But mm -hmm. there's, there's 35 Wi-Fi controller manufacturers out there that will give you the remote access, but there's very few that will actually deliver on all of those things. So um, contractors put in a ton of them and then they, they say, you know, I'm just not ready to start charging for monitoring yet. And I said, okay, well, what are you going to do? Because let me ask you how you guys would react. If I'm servicing your irrigation system and a year or two from now, I come to you and say, hey, um, that service that I've been providing for free is now going to cost you a hundred bucks a year. Yeah. Would it feel like a bait and switch? I mean, if that was proposed to me, I'd be looking for a new contractor. So yeah. the failure to define on the front end, what you're getting on the backside is the huge misstep. So, you know, I tell contractors, even if you want to give it to your client for a year for free, clearly define day of installation, what they are, what they are getting, you know, from you in that monitoring and let them know, Hey, the first year is part of the upgrade. And then every year after that, you know, we have different levels of monitoring because there are certain features and benefits. Like um, I have a buddy, uh, Aaron Knepp from Conserva in Ohio. He monitors over a thousand controllers. And with his client, he charges a very nominal fee because what he's hyper-focusing on is, hey, Joe, Carla, you guys want the adjustments made for maximum water savings? I'll handle 100% of that for you. Um, if there's an electrical issue or a hydraulic issue, you're going to get the alert, but it's not, I don't own that. You need to call me and tell me you want me to take action. So it alleviates the potential of you know, uh, where irrigation guys are like, eh, I might have a lawsuit on my hands if somebody's yard burns up and I didn't get the warning and then they're going to want me to pay for their sod. So Aaron's approach was just, hey, we'll take that off the table. I'll charge a little bit less. And now I can see the alert. The customer can still see the alert, but the earnest is on the client then to call me up and say, hey, take action on the high flow on zone five. We want you, we want you to resolve that, that issue. But yeah, there are the ones that are charging for monitoring is increasing every year. And we're trying um, to make it easier for them to do so by creating templates that define what it does. But client to client, again, like Aaron, for example, um, you need to decide what monitor, you know, are we doing everything that the HydroWise software provides? Or are we going to limit the scope of that? And then some even add addition onto it saying, hey, with our top tier monitoring, um, you're going to get a midsummer inspection and any re any alerts generated for service work. If you're a, if you're a client that is uh, on our monitoring plan, we're going to give you a discount on that work outside of the startup and winterization. So I, I love, I mean, Aaron's a guy who I met five years ago. He had 20 Wi-Fi controllers last year at the GIE Expo in Louisville. We were on a five panel discussion for the Irrigation Association. And right before we went live, he pulled out his phone. He said, Kev, look at this. And he pulled it up and he had a thousand clients and he goes, and I, every one of them's on my monitoring and they're all loving it. And I'm like, there was a room of a hundred plus people. I said, my, I'm going to tee you up because this, I mean, this <laughs> is just, I work for the manufacturer. If I say it, yeah, easy for you, Kevin, you're not an entrepreneur. You don't own your own company. You don't, you don't know the true trials and tribulations that we go through. And they're right from the aspect of, yes, I am an employee for Hunter Industries, but I know those trials and tribulations. I mean, I have three family members that still own irrigation companies. And I have intimate relationships with hundreds of irrigation contractors throughout the, throughout the nation. And like I said, I, we want to see them deliver a high level of service and make money doing it. You know, it's a good relationship. And um, yeah. that is, that's really just be, the been um, 
a big opportunity, but it could be, we're only scratching the surface and it could yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. And I have some questions, Kevin, but we actually have one um, from one of the members of the Facebook group, uh, mm -hmm. Steve Nold. He said to do the monitoring, mm -hmm. um, the way that, that, that you were describing, Kevin, do, do we need a flow meter installed as well as the hydro wise? So um, it's a, it's a two part when you hang um, it with Steve, correct? Yeah, Steve, when you when you hang that hardware, uh, the Hydrowise hardware, just by simply attaching the controller, the electrical integrity monitoring component comes with it. OK, so it's going to read the current draw on every one of those solenoids and you got your arms all the way around the integrity of the electrical. If you want to also have the same optics on the water flow and the hydraulics, yes, then it would require a flow meter. Now, um, we manufacture flow meters from three quarter inch to two inch. We play friendly with others. So as long as it's a pulse per gallon flow meter, we can hardwire it back to the controller. And then a year and a half ago, we debuted wireless flow as well. That really loosened up um, the application because if you're a contractor, and Steve, I'm assuming is, um, you, you know how long it takes to hang a controller and program it. So you can blanket market to your clients, right? Hey, it's a thousand bucks if you want a Wi-Fi controller. And I know contractors that no longer remove snow during the winter and just hang Wi-Fi controllers. And it's more profitable work and they don't have to go at all wee hours, wild hours of the night. But many were reluctant to put a number on the flow meter because cutting into mm -hmm. the, the sprinkler system piping is a variable in terms of labor and material. And if it's going in the basement on the copper, certainly um, that could triple the, the actual cost of just the controller upgrade. But now the ability to know that I don't have to run hard wires back to the controller shielded cable um, and being able to go with a, a wireless setup, they can kind of say, well, I know what a valve box costs. I know what it costs to dig a hole, connect this. So it's, it's beginning to increase. On the front end, Flow meters go in with about 10% of the Wi-Fi controllers that we manufacture today. And on new installs, it's a higher number, but just in general controllers, we sell the flow meters, it's about 10%. Because in the retrofit, it, like I said, it's, it might, hey, I got a grand for a Wi-Fi controller. I don't have 3000 for a Wi-Fi controller with a flow meter. But if you're doing it from the jump, it's almost like, um, I got another sports reference for you. You know, again, and I'm going to keep it in Chicago, um, but it would be like you had Walter Payton as a running back and you're going, you know what, today we're just going to throw the ball. You're leaving a lot of horsepower on the sidelines. You know what I mean? It's just, or if you had Tom Brady as a quarterback and you're like, today, we're only going to run the football. You know, it's like, <laughs> if you're doing it from the beginning, you know, it might not be a halftime decision, but before the game, let, 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 let's put the goat in. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, Kevin. Kevin. And, yeah. you know, one of the things, you know, just just kind of going back to when you were talking about some of the ROI, um, something that came to mind was thinking about commercial properties. You know, that ROI translates and, you know, I would say there's a lot more um, opportunity there for, you know, even, you know, the cost savings and 100%. literally increasing profits for these commercial properties. Yes. Um, and I'll, so there was a, it was something that came up just um, organically through screwing around. Um, the, our product manager for Hydrowise, Anthony Long, who's Australian based, um, it, we came. I, I hit him up one day and I, I said, "Man, I would love to like create a fake site replicating the this exact commercial property to try to give that property manager or homeowner association some data, you know, to show them what they potentially could be saving." so that they'll free up the purse strings a little bit or find budget in the next season for that upgrade. So we came up with something in the, in the tech world that happens all the time, just called virtual twinning. Um, so you take all your programming from your site, replicate the number of zones. Um, you can right now create a Hydrowise account for $0 and make a virtual site mimicking a site that you have, putting in the address, which is critical because now we're using the virtual weather station. So we're seeing the real data. And applying those virtually applying those water triggers again we're doing it by runtime right so if we've got a thousand minutes of runtime but 
with the virtual water triggers, it got it down to 750 minutes of water time. Hey, we had a 25% savings. So wow. you can let this virtual twin run for a season and maybe once a quarter, call up your HOA or that property manager and just say, hey, what'd you guys spend on irrigation water last month? And then you can download and export and email that client that beautiful little graph, right? Of exactly what the potential water savings or um, with this, if you want to put the client's email in as a, as a virtual client, you can spit those reports to them on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis, staying in that frontal lobe to remind them, oh my God, last month would have been a thousand bucks. Oh, this month's 2000. Two thousand. What did, what did Joe want for that upgrade? Oh, it was three grand. Oh, geez. We make our money back in three months. Let's go. You know, so it's, um, it's out there. It's just in the, in the, with the today's world, with the now customer and the now economy, um, everybody is vying for your attention, right? So it's trying to deliver this messaging as, as simplistic and authentic and as engaging as possible. Because it, again, it's, is it a self-serving nar narrative? Yeah, we're all in the business of making money, but I, look, Hunter Industries at their core, it's the easiest company I've ever went to work for because their core values and mine as a human being perfectly align with one another. And I mean, I went out to the factory when I was a young 20 something. And I remember like halfway through my tour, I turned to my coworker who was 20 years my senior and I bumped him and I'm like, this is a bunch of crap. When, when are they going to stop smiling and put in <laughs> end this show? Because it's BS. I'm not buying it. And, I, he, and he called me out and I was embarrassed as all get out at the time. But it, the guy giving us the tour, he said, hey, Steve, Kevin thinks this is a bunch of shit. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, he thinks you guys are putting on a facade for him. And he's like, no, that's really what it's like here. And I mean, um, it is, we are, everything that Hunter does, I mean, we, we've tr we have almost no environmental footprint. I mean, anything that we can recycle is recycled. The campus is powered off of solar and natural gas generators. Everything we can do in-house possible, we do. And there are concerted efforts on a daily basis to continue to reduce our environmental footprint and conserve the precious natural resource of water. And many big companies, right? That's what they say. That's the tagline. That's the core values on the door. But believe me, 15 years of living it and seeing huge major investment that they're not going to see the ROI on, on the short term, but knowing that that's the right thing to do. There have been a lot of decisions made at the organization that were the right thing to do that weren't the profitable thing to do. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I really feel empowered at this organization and I, it's easy to get out of bed and go to work for them because it's not a tagline. I mean, they're, they're, they're literally about it. And, and that's not a knock. Am I any of my competitors either? I, I've never worked for other manufacturers. So, um, you know, but if you ask, you ask around anybody that uses Hunter products feel, feels and knows that difference, right? I mean, we, there's a, there's a Kevin that comes with every box you buy. Awesome. Love it. And kind of, you know, wrapping up here, do you have any um, last minute remarks that you'd like to make in regard to irrigation or anything? Yeah, I, I would. Um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to step off the smart controller train for a moment and, and say, Hey, look, these are just basic things, whether you're a contractor listening or you're a homeowner, I want you to, I want you to take a look. J July is smart water month. Okay. So we want to uh, try to identify low hanging fruit opportunity for site improvements. If you see in your yard, if you know where your irrigation heads are, because all the grass around the head is knocked down, that head is either too low or your mow height is higher than what that head can get and the head can't get above. So the nozzle stream is, is you're having to cycle twice as long because the vast majority is falling right by the head until all that grass is flattened. And if the grass is greener around the heads, that's a sign. We call that ring around the collar. It could be easily remedied by install, raising the head up to grade with nipple extensions, which is not super labor intense. I mean, this is, you're going to get wet and you're going to need a shovel um, or installing a head that has a six inch riser. States like Colorado have implemented laws that new irrigation must have a six inch riser because, uh, you know, I'll challenge anybody listening, grab a ruler when we're off today, go out in your yard, measure your grass height, 
Most mow at three inches, three and a half, four inches. When you're using a four inch pop-up, even if it's at grade and you're mowing at four inches, you're going to get that ring around the collar and it could easily be improve the efficiency of your system by going with a taller riser. If you have spray heads that spray and omit short radius irrigation, right? They're very easily distorted by the wind and they require a specific pressure for efficiency. And even with that specific pressure, there's a better tool in the toolbox moving to something like an MP rotator, which lays down water at 30 times the 30 times higher efficiency and the evenness than a traditional spray nozzle. Um, and it holds up better in the wind and it lays down water at a rate that the ground can absorb. Okay. That doesn't require a shovel. You hold the riser, unthread the spray nozzle, thread the MP rotator on, and you have a 30% efficiency improvement on your irrigation system. So again, smart controller is great, but not on a dumb irrigation system. So spend the time in your yard first. If you got puddled areas or you have really dry areas or the turf is knocked down around your head or you're, you have spray nozzles, MP rotator, elevating, raising those heads up, that that's where you really, I mean, in the spirit of smart water month, that, that, that would, if everybody just did that, that's listening, we could save water and look primary driver. I live in the Midwest, you know, we're a bunch of knuckle draggers. We got the great lakes. Nobody's worried about running out of water, right? We got all the water we need. <laughs> One irrigation cycle at my house costs $38 and I have pressure regulation and I have six inch risers and I'm running high efficiency nozzles cost me $21 per thousand gallons of water where I live in the Western suburbs of the Chicagoland area. So for me, the primary driver and for most in my neck of the woods is cost, but whether it's cost or conservation, they both are working towards the same direction, which is improved efficiency. No, that's, that's great. Thank you for those tips. And if anybody has any questions in regard to anything that we spoke about today or Hunter Industries or anything like that, where can they um, best reach you? Yeah, um, I thank you for that, that opportunity. I wouldn't uh, give a selfish plug, but since you teed us up, um, since this is a Facebook Live, um, I would say go to Hunter FX Midwest. Um, we have a, we had, that's, um, I'm one of 10 guys on the Great Lakes team, bunch of studs, great, you know, it's very helpful. And we put out content that's sometimes humorous, but it's always relevant. I mean, our filter for our posts, um, and you can interact with us on there is if we get asked a question by a green industry professional two or three times, we cut a post answering the question. Cause we figure if one person's asking many more want to know, um, and we monitor that pretty heavily. Um, you know, I'm, mel I'm melting modems over here at the Battistoni house. I'm online <laughs> so much. So uh, that would probably be the best way is just on Facebook, Hunter FX Midwest. Awesome. Awesome. Thank yeah. So and much. yeah. And I've, I've seen a lot of your content there and it's, and it's great. And we, we already <laughs> included it below here in the comments. So, um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, join that group guys. And, uh, you know, thank you very much for uh, joining us, Kevin. Absolutely. It's, it was my pleasure. I, I appreciate the opportunity. I enjoyed the interaction and I hope your, uh, your viewers found value in the content. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Have a Thank good night. You. you as well. Take care. Talk right. soon.